Hi everyone. Today I want to talk to you about the <coughs> evolution of a fashion law, the concept of fashion law, which is called in French droit du luxe or law of luxury goods. Or, uh, so, um, droit du luxe, droit de la mode. So, when I founded my our law firm, Crefovi, back in 2012, I was super excited because I had just attended the Fashion Law Bootcamp at Fordham um, University, at Fordham School of Law, which is a um, fashion law uh, curriculum managed and directed by uh, Professor Susan Scafidi, who is um, in the United States of America, recognized as the, uh, the uh, expert in fashion law. Uh, indeed, I think she is probably the one who coined the term fashion law in the US, while I created the term droit de la mode, droit du luxe, uh, here in Europe. Back in 2004, I was the um, co-editor and also the uh, basically the organizer of the drafting of uh, uh, a thematic supplement of a supplement for the law review, uh, l'ami droit des affaires, which um, focused on basically the emergence of uh, fashion law, uh, uh, the law of luxury goods, droit du luxe, back in 2004, as I said, so quite a long time ago. Because I was a young lawyer by then, I, and um, I was practicing um, as a banking and finance lawyer at uh, one of the most prestigious and largest firms in uh, in France, which is called Gilles Loire Noël, uh, in banking and finance law. And I could only see that there were lots of interactions between the legal profession and also um, the uh, fashion and luxury sector. And that in order to become, I mean, there was something to be done here in order to become a fashion law expert, uh, a luxury goods ex legal expert. And so, Back then, back in 2003, back in 2004, I started thinking that, you know, perhaps it could become a, its own legal uh, discipline, its own legal practice, you know, droit du luxe, droit de la mode, fashion law, law of luxury goods. And so that's why I decided to approach uh, l'ami droit des affaires and um, create that supplement on the dro uh, droit de la mode. So you can actually access that supplement from our law, uh, our websites, crefovi.com and crefovi.fr if you wish, by just typing in droit de la mode, droit du luxe in uh, in our search, uh, search bar. Um, so I wanted to basically, you know, with this, uh, <coughs> um, I mean, now I have like, how can I say, I, I can take a step back. Yes, that's it. I can take a step back on the evolution of uh, droit du luxe et droit de la mode. And what's been happening is that um, it emerged, as I said, back in 2003, back in 2004, uh, with Susan Scafidi doing the work out of the US, me doing the work here in Europe. And um, it became quite important and uh, even it grew even large, larger after the financial crisis in 2008, 2010. Why? Because there were quite a lot of uh, lawyers out of, jo uh, out of jobs, out of work. And um, because the fashion and luxury goods sectors were doing so well, it seemed like, um, like uh, uh, a, an industrial sector. Um, uh, that had some good prospects of employment, which, which is actually true because thanks to the globalization, I mean, up to one or two years ago before the COVID-19 crisis, with the globalization, obviously the um, fashion and uh, luxury sectors have massively um, developed and made the most of globalization. So by this, I mean that um, uh, they have expanded in the, um, in the uh, uh, market where the growth uh, 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 and uh, demand for um, luxury products are, is the highest, like in um, South, South and Southeast Asia and uh, China, as Asians have discovered, I'd say around 10 years ago, luxury products from Europe and um, now really love it. So for them, it's a sort of... Uh, you know, status thing and a class thing to actually own some luxury products. And um, of course, luxury brands have expanded in the US and then the Americas as well, where also the middle class in South America and also Ameri in the, uh, North America also aspires to have more luxury products to sh show their status as, uh, you know, prospering uh, upper middle class uh, citizens. 
and uh, and of course Europe, which has always been the basically the the, the cradle of uh, the luxury products, is, is 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 still quite a strong market, um, especially with tourists. Um, again, pre COVID nineteen crisis, because at the moment the tourist industry is in dire straits. Um, hopefully, soon it will turn around. Uh, so. Yeah, so having now this, taken this step back, so how is the, you know, uh, fashion law and law of luxury goods going? Well, I've, I would say in retrospect that um, it, is, it has not evolved as, as um, uh, um, a legal practice in itself. Um, I think that the, there was a bit of a fad um, in between 2012, I'd say, and 2014, 15, with lawyers who wanted to brand themselves, you know, solely as luxury fashion lawyers, a bit like art lawyers or energy lawyers or banking lawyers, etc. Um, I think that this is not really taken off, to be honest. Um, I can't really explain why. Maybe it's still being seen as quite fluffy to brand yourself as a fashion lawyer. Um, but but the skills for a, a, a good expert, both in on the legal side of things and on the uh, on the fashion and luxury industry, are still definitely in demand. There's still lots of demand from um, from um, uh, fashion and luxury brands, and in particular from uh, the uh, conglomerates, the three or four conglomerates which um, own so many fashion and luxury brands in their portfolio. Um, so the likes of. LVMH in France, Kering in uh, in France, and <clears throat> sorry, Richmond in uh, in Switzerland. So um, so yeah, so there's definitely you know uh, uh, a market there for lawyers who know the luxury and fashion industries inside out. However, I would say that on the legal side, um, it has not evolved um, the fashion law and the law of luxury goods as a per as a per se um, uh, legal practice in most law firms. So our specificity at the law firm Kofovi is that we are focused on advising the creative industry. So we have clients in the art sector, clients in fashion, uh, clients in um, in the high, high tech, um, in media and entertainment, in uh, um, life sciences, etc., etc. And in all these sectors, the most important asset is actually intellectual property. It's actually the know-how, the reputation, the branding. Um, yeah, so intellectual property rights. So as a, um, a fashion lawyer or as a creative lawyer, if you want to call it like that, um, you do need to be strong with uh, basically negotiated contracts. You need to be strong with um, intellectual property rights and how to enforce them and how to protect them for registration. You also need to be strong in tax matters um, because obviously making the most of uh, uh, tax specificities in particular in art law is very important and um and also you know the litigation is also important if you want to be able to enforce intellectual property rights or defend some uh, some um, defendants who have been wrongly accused of uh, infringing uh, property rights uh, competition and antitrust law is also uh, of the essence so it's it's really great you know in order to have a well-rounded uh, legal practice focusing on uh, uh, basically business law um, which uh, allows you to develop a skill set in different type of legal fields that are relevant to the um, creative industries. And that is really great because you never get bored. It's, all, it's very uh, uh, heterogeneous. It's, uh, it's a very diverse type of work as a lawyer and it's very creative as well. And also you have the pleasure of working with creative people. So that's it. That's all I wanted to say today. Fashion law, no, it's still not very in terms of being recognized as a you know, fully fledged legal practice, but that's all right. I can live with that because the skills of a fashion lawyer, um, which are basically to be a well-rounded lawyer in business law and knowing quite a lot of things in different legal fields, are still very much in demand. And therefore, uh, we're very happy to serve you uh, whenever and uh, wherever you are in the world. Now, if you like um, our updates, our Crefervy's daily updates, please do subscribe to, um, to our uh, channels on the podcast channel that you uh, listen to uh, this uh, 
uh, this re recording on and also to YouTube and um, yeah and um, don't hesitate to follow us on Instagram at Crefovi and bye for now.